We now move to officers' reports to council, and the first is 17.1, financial hardship policy, and the recommended motion is down on page 27. Looking for a mover and a seconder of that recommended motion. I can move that. Councillor Cordova. I'm happy to second. Second by Councillor Fox. Councillor Cordova. Thank you very much, Mayor. What we're looking at here is the report to replace Council's interim financial hardship policy with a new financial hardship policy. And this comes at a time when going through not just a biological and a health crisis, but also an economic crisis places additional burden on the ratepayers of this municipality. And therefore it also places an additional onus on us as a council to provide um, reasonable and proportionate hardship policies where possible. And uh, that's what this report outlines. Um, so particular thanks to the author, Mr. Jones, and also the authoriser, Mr. Breen. What we're looking at here is essentially uh, a recommendation to adopt the new report and also which um, uh, details, postponement of payments, conditions of postponement, the remissions of rates, um, and essentially discusses that. I guess one of the key takeaways, um, something to bear in mind, is that when we are administering rates as a council, this is as a form of taxation rather than a, a source of um, uh, like a, a fee for service kind of kind of a thing. So um, it's supposed to be equitable. It's supposed to be fair. And it's supposed to recognise when uh, ratepayers, be they residential or be they commercial or industrial ratepayers, are unable to pay um, what what the provisions are for that. I would like to offer one of the staff the opportunity to speak to the various tenants of the proposal of the the policy for for any changes that they'd like to particularly highlight. Um, so. Is, is there a staff member that would like to speak to that? Councillor Corover, we um, use the, what's your question exactly? Thanks, Mayor. My question is, what are some of the highlights from the, uh, uh, the new policy that members of the public should make themselves aware of? Mr. Breen. Oh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, essentially, uh, I guess the key change to the policy, and this is very much based on uh, advice from Legat uh, in regards to offering uh, the ability to waive rates for uh, industrial and commercial tenants. Uh, we very much targeted this at uh, small businesses, uh, so those with turnover uh, less than 500,000. Uh, so it's very much targeted at that uh, smaller type business. and. Uh, Based on the amount of revenue that they've lost over a period of time, there are a number of uh, um, a number of benefits that we could uh, pass on to the the ratepayer to, to assist them uh, during a I guess what's a difficult period of time. So that's probably the key change from the, um, the interim policy that was put in place uh, at the start of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Thanks very much. Just to conclude my contribution, Mayor, on this, it's important to note that uh, the the residents and the commercial and industrial ratepayers of the community are going through a very difficult time right now, and so too is the council in terms of its financial situation. We need to remain vigilant to making sure we remain in a healthy situation. And so, as the conclusion reports that this council is not necessarily in a financial position of being able to grant a large number of rate remissions. However, we certainly need to, where we can, show our compassion via our, a reasonable, proportionate and timely uh, hardship policy. And so I commend this report to the Council. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there being, there's no further speakers have indicated they want to speak. So if that's the case, I'm going to ask Councillor Cordover to sum up. Councillor Cordover. Thank you very much, Mayor. I think we've had a healthy debate or discussion around the financial hardship policy tonight. Fundamentally, this policy is, a, is about compassion. It's providing ratepayers who are suffering financial hardship um, some relief via alternative payment mechanisms uh, that still require them to pay council rates and charges, but uh, to do so in a in a, uh, a way that is, uh, uh, I guess, understanding of their particular financial position and where a person is unable to pay rates or charges when due, for reasons beyond the control, their control, 
uh, this policy, uh, I guess, sets out the, the guidelines and the definitions um, under which, or the criteria under which they're able to seek that provision. I think we are a compassionate council and a council that cares deeply for uh, the well-being of of ratepayers and residents and visitors, whether they're residential, commercial, or industrial, and so I commend this financial hardship policy to the council. Thank you. Thank you. So the motion is moved by Councillor Cordover and seconded by Councillor Fox. Is that council adopt the attached financial hardship policy? And I am going to go through our list. If you agree, please say yes. And if you disagree, please say no. Councillor Westwood? Yes. Councillor Bastone? Yes. Councillor Cordover? Yes. Councillor Fox? Yes. Councillor Grace? Yes. Councillor Midgley? Yes. Councillor Street? Councillor Street? I'll come back to you if you're with us. Maybe you could type in the chat box. Councillor Wass? Yes. Councillor Reit. Yes. Councillor Winter is also a yes. Councillor Strady back with us. Just got a text from him. Yes. I know this is not perfect um, for those watching at home, but um, Councillor Street has already let me know that he's, well, he's well, we know he's dropped out once, but he's dropped out a few other times while he hasn't been speaking, um, and so it does make it difficult. But uh, he's, he's carried yes. unanimously, and he said yes now. That's great.